The unrelenting heat draws them to the riverbank. Families looking for respite and a bit of fun under the sun. This is just amazing. Oh, sorry, fun. So much fun. Wow. You know, we've been drifting down here probably for about three hours or so, and yeah, it's been a great time. Vancouver Island's Cowichan River is a busy place in the summer with numerous demands on its normally reliable flow of clean, cool water. This year, though, the water is telling a different story. One that has people here worried. The ground looks pretty dry up in the, right up to the edge. Very dry. Kenzie Cuthbert uh, again, lives on an right, acreage alongside the river. Yeah, we'll see what it's doing today. He's spent 27 years here as a fishing guide, keeping a close eye on every little change in the ecosystem, even regularly taking the Cowichan's temperature to gauge its health. Okay. What, what's it reading now? 24. 24 degrees. How serious is that? That's bad. That's getting close to lethal to fish. Salmon, like these young coho fry on Cuthbert's property, are very sensitive to water temperature. The latest numbers show just how bad things are in southern B.C., only a few millimeters of rain in the last few months, many streams at record lows and getting lower. And temperatures are busting records on a regular basis. And how worried are you? Uh, pretty worried. <laughs> I try not to think about it so I can sleep. Guiding in B.C. is big business, with customers flying in from around the world to catch one of the many prized species that live here. Everybody on southern Vancouver Island, as of right now, is looking at a hit. Here, downstream, it's even worse. That's because a pulp mill draws off some of the river for its use. One indication of trouble is all this green algae. It shows that the water is both warm and it's starved of oxygen. In the lower river, large mats of goop have replaced the clear, fast-moving water salmon need to survive. If you actually feel here, yeah. the temperature is warm. It's like warmer, like warm bath water. Yeah. And, and that's just that's way, way too high for, for fish. You can see where our guys were walking through earlier. Tim Kolchiski is the biologist for the Cowichan First Nation. He says the warm, ankle-deep water is a serious threat to salmon. So where we're walking now, what would a, a healthy level be? Would we be swimming? Well, optimally, you know, for schnook migration, you should at least be wading or swimming. The struggle over water use goes back decades. Spearing is our traditional way. Some of Cowichan Chief William Seymour's uh, earliest memories are of spearing and netting fish snow. along the river. He says the needs of the fish have to come first. So when we're closing down the rivers to ensure that our fish survive, it's our community that suffers because now they don't have anything to put on the table. That's how important that fish is to our community. If things are bad here, they're even worse in the United States. Hundreds of thousands of salmon are dying in West Coast rivers. Sturgeon, too, have been found dead, with scientists pointing to unusually warm waters as the culprit. We'll stack some right here. In some cases, convicts are being taken from prisons, used for work crews to rescue salmon. Never had to do anything like this before. In others, fish and wildlife personnel have moved hundreds of thousands of fish, trucking them to cooler water. And now it's definitely climbing up again with the heat because we're it's pretty warm out. People in BC fear it's a vision of what's to come. So it takes an event like this where people have to run out of water um, and no snowpack to make them realize it. it it's crazy. It's frustrating. For the Couchin people and, and for Couchin Valley residents, there's a, there's a huge amount at risk. And we're really, really worried. For now, the Couchin still flows, sustaining both aquatic life and human leisure, but growing increasingly frail with each drop heading to the ocean. Greg Rasmussen, CBC News, on the Couchin River.